Hallelujah, hallelujah. Shalom and uh, welcome to our church uh, family. Um, would you agree with me if I say that it's uh, always a blessing to gather together as a family, right? Amen. 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 And uh, before I go further, um, I would like to welcome our guest, uh, Jorel. Jorel. Jorel is over there, and uh, it's, uh, I'm so, I'm so ecstatic here yeah, this morning to see Jorel. Um, do you know the last time I saw him was in the church in, in Toronto where we used to attend, and the last time I saw him was 2008. Wow. 2008, so that's a good, uh, what, 16 uh, years, 16 years uh, since then, and then, uh, and uh, he lives in Milton, so um, let's uh, welcome uh, Jurel. Uh, thank you for joining us uh, this uh, morning. Hallelujah, praise God. So friends, whether this is your, uh, you are a first uh, timer like Jurel, or you're, you are an old timer since the, the church uh, began, or you're somewhere in, in between those, we welcome you this uh, morning, and it's a joy. We are all glad to see all of you today. So um, this uh, morning our focus, uh, the exhortation focus um, on the theme of uh, unity, unity. Would you say unity? Unity. 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 In Ephesians 4 uh, verses 3 to 6, uh, the Apostle Paul reminds us, and I'm reading uh, to the NLT translation, verse 3, study of verse 3. Make every effort to keep yourself united in the spirit, binding yourselves together with peace, for there is one body, nice, and one spirit, just as you have been called to the glorious hope for the future. Down in verse 5, there is one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all, in all, and living through all. Folks, we are all unique. We are all different in so many ways. But let me remind you this morning, that we are one in faith. It's the same blood of Jesus Christ that ran in your vein, in my vein, and that's what binds us together, the love of Christ. Amen, church? Amen, amen. amen. And friends, uh, as we worship today, let's celebrate this unity we have in Jesus and seek his guidance that we could love, uh, we could live a life har uh, that's harmonious to each other. Once again, welcome. We are glad you are here with us. Will you pray with me? Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning, Lord God, declaring that we are united in faith, Lord God, binded by your, your love, Father God. Thank you for this wonderful uh, church family that you have brought us uh, together once again this beautiful and blessed Sunday morning. Father God, we praise you for, for, the, for the presence, Lord God, and above all your presence right now, Lord God. So, Lord, we ask your spirit, Lord God, to knit each one of us together, Lord God. Remove any divisions, remove any misunderstanding, remove any strife in the name of Jesus, Lord God, and help us to focus on you, Lord God, to, to that shared love that binds us together, Father God that we may be the light and salt of this earth, and Lord God, the mission that you have called us to do, Father God. May our words, our actions, and fellowship will give glory to your name today, Father God. Teach us to love one another unconditionally. Bless this gathering, Father God, from the start of the service, Lord God. I ask that you would anoint our worship leaders, Sister Grace and the band, Lord God. I pray for Pastor, uh, we will lift you, Pastor Rick, as we're going to deliver your word. Father God, may our hearts will be open, Lord God, and we may not only hear you, Father God, but you will transform our hearts, Lord God, and it could be seen through our actions, Lord God. We want that, 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 that transformation in our lives, Lord God, that we may not only hear it, but we would live out, Father God, your word today, Father God. Bless this gathering. Father God, and every part of this uh, service, Lord God, we entrust to you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So for our announcement, 
And uh, this uh, coming uh, Wednesday, uh, we will have our midweek service as uh, usual. We start our online gathering via Zoom at uh, 7 p.m. And then our, our um, gathering, our, our service formally starts at 7.30. And uh, Pastor Rick would be our exhorter, praise God. So if you have any prayer requests, please, please don't hesitate to reach uh, Pastor Rick, Sister Resi, uh, me, Sister Fez, uh, Pidor Nell, and of course, Sister Rick is also heading at the intercession, uh, intercessory ministry. So uh, praise God again um, this coming Wednesday, 7 p.m., midweek service. And we look forward to see you online. Hallelujah. And for next week, we have uh, Sister Mary Vick as our worship leader next Sunday, uh, opening prayer, um, Brother Jojo, and of course, I'm assigned to deliver God's word. And for the refreshment, we have the Adriano and Adinson family as well. And um, for the, oh, yes, and uh, we appreciate your sacrificial giving for supporting the uh, different ministries in, of the church and uh, and uh, we have uh, three ways to give. First, uh, of course, to Taiki. Um, online giving, you could use uh, the uh, Taiki apps or um, the website. And the second way is just to give the rent or donation uh, uh, box at the back. And uh, finally, if you, could, if you are not able to come and still want to bless the, uh, the church, we, uh, give us uh, a shout. You could uh, call the Tess, uh, Tito Arnell. And uh, we'll uh, soon buy your place, and uh, and uh, we will be greatly blessed to receive your 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 blessings. Hallelujah! And that that's uh, it. Um, so um, before we go any further, um, why why don't we come to the Lord in prayer as we ask the Lord to bless the giving as well our Sunday school kids. Father God, we come before you once again, Lord God, knowing and believing that you are hearing us, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for all of the uh, blessings that you uh, have given us, uh, Father God. Yeah, we know, Lord, that every good thing comes from above, and we recognize that one, Lord God. So right now, Lord, we um, return a portion of this uh, blessing, Lord God. We know that uh, this uh, blessing will be used for the furtherance of your kingdom, Lord God. So we ask you to multiply this uh, blessing for the kingdom's sake. Uh, and for your namesake alone, Father God, and even for our kids, Lord God, as we uh, as we are uh, gonna dismiss them uh, later to the Sunday school, Lord God, we ask you to uh, continuously reveal yourself to each one of them that they will be transformed, gradually transformed to the image and likeness of our Lord Jesus Christ, Father God. We also entrust to you our Sunday school teachers, Lord God, that they may be the 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 mouth, the hands, and the feet of our Lord Jesus Christ, Lord God, that that uh, they, they will be used mightily for the growth, uh, for the spiritual growth of our kids, Lord God. Thank you for their hearts. Thank you for their ministry, Lord God. Have your way in us, Lord God. It's in <clears throat> Jesus' name that we put our trust, and everyone says, Amen, Amen, Amen. amen, amen. amen. So why don't we welcome our worship uh, team, uh, Sister Grace, uh, Sister Grace and the, the BASF uh, worship team. Thank you so much. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Pastor Mike. Praise God. Amen. Family Church, be alive. Thank you. Thank you for your time here that we are all here together to gather in this place. May we ask everyone to please stand and welcome each and every one. Uh, greet one another. Talk to them that Jesus loves you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus is alive in this place. Amen. 
the dream. May God of hope fill you with all the joy, peace as you trust in Him, so that you may overflow with the hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Let's come to the Lord. Oh, hallelujah, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for this time, oh Lord God, that you gathered us in this place, oh Lord God. Oh, Holy Spirit, Lord God, meet us today, oh Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for your faithfulness, your goodness upon our life, oh God. And as we give you praises and honor, oh Lord God, you deserve, oh Lord God, only you, Lord God, to be glorified and be magnified in the midst of us. Hallelujah, Amen. Lord God. Thank you, Lord God, for your love and your mercy upon us. Hallelujah. Thank you.
Christ. This song is a reminder of the power of God's presence in our lives. And we can trust that God will meet us in the middle and that he will never forsake us. We can take comfort in the words of Psalm 46 verse 1, which says, God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. We can also take comfort in the words of Isaiah 41 verse 10, which says, So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous hand. Amen. Hallelujah, my God. Hallelujah. Praise be to God.
everything in us, oh God. We commit to you, Lord God. And we are so grateful and thankful because of that love that you have given to us, oh God. Lord, we can find hope and peace in the Prince of Heaven. He is Jesus. The Bible tells us in Isaiah 9, four, verse 6, For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting, the Father, Prince of Peace. Jesus is the Prince of Heaven, and He is the Prince of Peace. He is the one who brings us hope and peace in the midst of our struggles and pain. Prince of Heaven speaks of the hope, the peace that Jesus brings. The lyrics tells us that the earth in shadow and is waiting in silent hope for the promise it longs to know. This promise is fulfilled with Jesus. is born in a manger. The angels in a holy haze lift their anthem and proclaim that Savior has come. Jesus is the Prince of Heaven and the incarnate of the Word of God. He is the King of Glory and is born wonder and majesty. He is forever worthy and the earth will sing to him. We can know him and confess our sins to him. We can lay our burdens at his feet with gladness sings. The Bible tells us, Romans 5, 8, but God shows his love for us that we were still sinners. Christ died for us. Jesus is the Prince of Heaven and he is the one who brings us hope and peace. He is the one who died for us so we can have eternal life. He is the one who brings us joy. Let us give thanks to the Prince of Heaven. Jesus of his love and mercy, let us lay our burdens at his feet with gladness, saints with his goodness, grace. Let us proclaim the goodness of Jesus Christ and share his love with the world. Amen. Hallelujah.
blood in our veins. You're just strengthening our body and muscles. You need the wisdom and knowledge in our head, Lord. Indeed, Lord, apart from you, we cannot do anything. You're the reason that we are here on the face of the earth. You're the reason that we were born. Big March, the start of uh, season of Advent. Wow, praise God. The season of Advent is a type of preparation and celebration in the Christian church calendar that leads to Christmas. So in preparation for Advent, we will be starting a short series of preaching that will lead us and to be concluded during our Christmas celebration here in the church on December 22nd. So our series shall be called, there you go, you got it. It shall be called the series. And the chosen passage for this series is from Isaiah 9, 6. Sister Grace read that uh, during the worship. In the series you will hear Pastor Mike and I alternating the preaching of God's message from the titles or roles given to Messiah Jesus through the prophet Isaiah, of course. So please stand with me as we read our verse for today, Isaiah 9, 6, verse 9, 6, and uh, we'll be reading from the King James Version. So read all together. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting, everlasting Father, and Jesus. So we pray, Father God, Lord, again, thank you for today. Holy Spirit, thank you, oh God, for your presence, oh God, Lord. And even, oh God, Lord, I believe, though we know that your anointing is upon your word, because your word is living and alive, oh God, Lord, and powerful, oh God. And, and uh, I pray, oh God, that the word will penetrate to the hearts of the listener, including the deliverer, which is me, oh God, Lord. 
I am nothing but a mouthpiece to you, O God, Lord. Use me powerfully, O God, that you will also power the ears of the listener, O God, Lord. That it will not just be sort of information, but it will be transformation to our lives, O God, Lord. Hallelujah. Especially as we are preparing for the Advent season, O God. Thank you, O God, Lord. In the name we pray. Amen. 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 Let's be uh, seated. Before uh, diving in into our message today, let me give a short background or gist of the book with a title same as the name of the author, Isaiah, of course. Isaiah was a prophet of God who was called for a mission. The Lord had shown him a glimpse of his glorious throne and placed a call on his life, which we can read in Isaiah chapter 6. As a prophet, he spoke God's word. For the most part, he spoke words of confrontation. Okay? And he also spoke words of exhortation and words of warning. He spoke words that made him extremely unpopular. But even when he faced opposition, Isaiah continued to stand up for the truth. The Lord had called him to warn the people of their headlong rush into disaster. Tough job for Isaiah, isn't it? Tough call. Though Israel will face the consequences of their rebellion, Isaiah's prophetic words are full of hope for the day when God would restore his people to himself. This hope would be embodied through God's servant, Emmanuel, God with us, who will want to establish a new Israel and God's kingdom on the earth. Isaiah's prophecies are fulfilled in Jesus' life, death, and resurrection. Reading along with uh, the book of Isaiah, we can find that it is filled with sobering accounts of Israel's sin and rebellion and warning of their coming judgment. But along with warnings, Isaiah also offers a message of hope that one day, a suffering servant, one day, the Messiah would come to establish God's kingdom on earth and create a new Jerusalem. <laughs> For generations, Isaiah's word has encouraged thousands of people who have waited in anticipation for the Messiah and for God to make right all that has been wrong. So whatever we see that's wrong today, one day everything will be made right. Amen. Do you believe that one day all sin and trouble and anguish and pain will be no more? Amen. Amen. Yes, believe it, brothers and sisters. But praise, praise be to God on high. We are no longer part of the group of people who up to now are still waiting for the Messiah to come. Jesus already came on the earth more than 2,000 years ago. As Paul wrote in Galatians 4 to 5, saying, But when the fullness of the time had come, God sent forth his Son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law that we might receive the adoption as sons. You and I are adopted children of God through Jesus Christ. Jesus did not only come to live on the earth, but he also died on the cross, and he rose again from the dead, and now seated at the right hand of God in heaven, interceding for you and me. Now, for the believers, for the unbelievers, I mean, Upon knowing that Jesus came on the earth, you probably would ask, so what? If you're a believer, then probably you will ask, so what if Jesus came? But for the believers, the question is this, now what? Now what? If you have Jesus Christ as your life today, we are to celebrate what the Lord has done. We are to remember, we are to reflect to rehearse and rejoice for what the Lord has done when He came here on earth and enjoy and, and anticipate 
what he promised to continue to do for his children while we wait for his return. And that's the very reason why we always partake communion once one Sunday in a month. It is a celebration and remembrance of Jesus' sacrifices on earth. So, in today's message, we will be unpacking what the prophet Isaiah said about the Messiah Jesus, the Emmanuel God with us. He said, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And the title of this preaching is simply Wonderful Counselor. Over there, Wonderful Counselor. But before, before we talk about the titles as I give them to Messiah, let us first see how it came about. How it came about to this point when he proclaimed that the child will be born and the son will be given. Isaiah 9.6 is a prophecy about a future child who would bear the government on his shoulder and be called by the titles that could only be attributed to the Son of God. This verse describes both humanity and divinity of Christ. So let's talk about His humanity. Jesus' humanity, unto us a child is born. Just imagine this. Jesus could have come as an adult. And fulfill his mission on the earth. But Jesus needed to put on himself humanity. So he needs to be born as a child. And we can all agree that all of us came here on earth through our mother's womb. And we all passed through the birth canal of our mother. We were all once upon a child. <coughs> Jesus was born of the spirit through a human body. Jesus was prophesied, was the prophesied seed of the woman in Genesis 3.15. Now, you might be wondering, why a child? Bakit bata? Bakit kailangan maging bata? Jesus was born as a child so that he can identify with humanity. Okay? He can, that so that he can identify with humanity. John 1, 14, the Apostle John tells us, And the Word became flesh, became human, and dwelt among us, and we have seen His glory, glory as the Son of the Father, full of grace and truth. Okay? Became flesh means it speaks about His humanity. Even in Colossians, 2.9, it says, For him, the whole fullness of deity dwells bodily. Deity being God, bodily means in the flesh. You have a physical form. Jesus is the second person of the Godhead, but he needed to add humanity in his being to qualify as a perfect sacrifice for sin. Man sin, therefore man needs to pay for his sin, right? Romans 6, 23. But God requires a perfect and unblemished sacrifice for man's sin. And no one can and will satisfy God's demand. Again, Jesus, the second person of the Godhead, needs to put on humanity to be the perfect and ultimate sacrifice for sin. And he did for unto us. A child is born. Now, why a child again? Jesus was born as a child to illustrate also his humility. Okay? I could imagine, I couldn't imagine King Charles III seeing him in the dirtiest and most dangerous street of London, sitting and mingling and eating together with the homeless and the street people and the peasants of society. That could be a form of humility if he did. 
But Jesus Christ showed humility in the real sense of the word humility. He became like you. The creator becoming like his creation. That's law. That's law. Jesus came down from heaven. He left heaven just to be with you, just to be like you and me. And Paul describes Jesus' humility as this in Philippians 2, 16. Who being the very nature of God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness. Folks, we are nothing. And because Jesus became nothing, he, he put on himself nothingness to be just like us. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on the cross. Mark 10, 45. For even the Son of God came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Imagine the King of Kings, the Lord of the heaven, the Prince of the heaven, serving you and me. Stooping down, you humbling himself so that he can be just like you and me. Mm -hmm. Now, let us see how Isaiah described the divinity of the Messiah. Jesus' divinity. For, I like that. For unto us a son is given. We've been forgiven. For unto us a son is given. The Messiah Jesus was not only a child to be born, but he was also a son to be given. We know that Jesus was God from the beginning. John 1.1 1, 1. He, has, he has no beginning or no end. And God cannot be born. But he is needed to be given and he speaks about his divinity. Unto us a son is given. God gave Jesus as his love gift to humanity. When the Son is given, it means divinity embrace humanity or divinity put on humanity. It means God stooped down so low that he was willing to be as lowly as his own creation. The creator becomes like his creation, as I've said earlier. In John 3.6, it reminds us, For God so loved the world that Jesus was born. Is that what it says? For God so loved the world that Jesus was born. No, that's not what it says. For God so loved the world that he gave. He gave. And the Son was given. For God so loved the world, he gave. He gave. The Hebrew word for given in Isaiah and the Greek word for gave in John has the same meaning that Jesus, the Son of God, was freely given for the sake of you and me. Now, what would the child born and what would the Son given do for you and for me? You might be thinking, so what? Kung, kung pinanganak si Jesus sa bilang bata at pinagkalob ang kanyang anak. So what? What would be it for me? It says here, so that the government can be upon his shoulder. He, he, he came. He, the child was born. The son was given for a purpose. So that the government will be upon his shoulder. It simply means Jesus will put the government on himself. So, what, what does this mean? Isaiah prophesied a dark period in Israel history as judgment of God upon them. But he also saw a future time of hope and deliverance when the Lord will send a Redeemer, the promised Messiah, to usher in a new day. The Messiah will be a human male child upon whose shoulder the government will rest. The word government in Hebrew is Mishra, which means dominion. 
power or sovereignty through legal authority. Isaiah continues that Messiah's government and its peace will never end and it will rule with fairness and justice. Yung po ang gagawin ng Panginoong Sus. While the child was when, because of the child was born and the son was given, he will put upon himself the government. Many Bible interpreters consider the word government will be upon his shoulder. It can be pictured on the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ carried upon his shoulder via Dolorosa and the crown of thorns was uh, while well, the crown of thorns was resting in his brow. That to them, that was the picture of the government will be upon his shoulder. That was the beginning when he carried upon himself the weight of the world upon his shoulder while he was carrying the cross and received the thorn of uh, the thorn crown upon his brow. Jesus Christ had the divine government, the dominion, power, and authority of the kingdom of heaven on his shoulder when he bore the cross for our sin. And it was for this act that he conquered sin, death, hell, and the devil. Amen? Amen. Now, how would Jesus run his government? How would Jesus run his government? You might be asking. By fulfilling the names and titles given him by God through Isaiah. You know, next year I believe there will be a federal election. And we just uh, also watched and witnessed the election in the, U in the U.S. Now, in the federal election, you might be wondering, what would be the platform for the for progressive conservative? How would they run the government? How about the liberal? What is their platform, the NDP? It's important to know before we decide who to vote for, right? Did you know that God has a platform set how the Messiah Jesus would run his government on his shoulder? It is by describing the titles and names given him. So that's what we'll be talking about. First, in the list, it will be wonderful counselor. Wonderful counselor. You know, as I was studying it, I discovered that there are two ways this title was interpreted by some theologian. First, using both words as one title, meaning wonderful counselor. And two, separating the titles into two as wonderful and counselor. Now, so first, let's talk about this title as two separate things. Okay? His name shall be called Wonderful. The Hebrew word for wonderful is Pele, which implies something miraculous, something incomprehensible, something that is awe-inspiring. The Messiah will call, cause us to be full of wonder. In today's language, we use the word wonderful so lightly. We say wonderful if they're pleasant, or lovely or likable. Wonder bread. Wonder land. Wonder bar. Wonder why. <laughs> we commend young children even for small things they've done by saying, that's wonderful, son. That's wonderful, daughter. But the name wonderful given to Jesus has a complete meaning altogether. Jesus is wonderful in a way that is bubbling to the mind. Jesus' name is not just a wonderful name, but his life and what he does are filled with wonder, leading people to marvel at the profound insights and solution he provides. He just don't give answer. He is the answer. Amen. Hallelujah. The name of Jesus is truly full of wonder, and I would say Jesus is wonderful in three stages of his life. He was wonderful in his birth, he was wonderful in his life, and he was wonderful even in his death. Let's talk about this one by one. Wonderful in his birth. 
Only Jesus was born like the way he was born. He could have chosen to be born in a palace and yet just chosen the path of humility. Remember? To, to show himself in humility. Uh, he has chosen the path of humility being born and stable for there was not even a room for him in the inn. He was not welcomed by anyone when he was born. So, in his birth, he stirred the whole nation of Israel and the neighboring towns and villages that even wise men from the east sought to worship him. The news of his birth traveled far, reaching to the east, prompting the three, three wise men to travel far just to worship the newborn king. His birth threatened Herod wanting to kill him. And we know that he was born of a virgin who has never knew a man. Jesus was holy God, and yet he was fully man. And at his birth, choir of angels in heaven sang in exultation, singing glory to God in the highest peace on earth, and goodwill to man. Has anyone here, when you were born, somebody, an angel of the Lord, sing up in heaven? <laughs> no one. Only the birth of Jesus uh, prompted the angels to sing and as choir with exultation. And at his birth, he was given the most wonderful name of all, the name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sin. Friends, I don't know about you, but no one was like him in his birth. Amen? Amen? Now, wonderful in his life. Jesus lived a perfect, sinless life. He was envied by the people around him, and his presence intimidated those that were against him. So Jesus was both loved and hated by the Jews and Gentiles alike. In his life on earth, he teaches the multitude. He heals the sick. He raised the dead to life. He rebukes the proud. He confronted his enemies. He calmed the storm. He performs many miracles. He cast demons. He set the prisoners free. And above all, he loves people, even they are their enemies. Not only wonderful in his birth and his life, but he was also wonderful in his death. But pastor, how could you call death as a wonderful thing? Friends, let me tell you, without Jesus dying, we will all die and go to hell and be separated from God for all eternity. Jesus' death was a wonderful news to all. But how? His death brought us life. That's good news. He gave his life a ransom for many. His death brought us peace. Peace with God, peace of God, and peace in God. Amen? And here is the best wonder about his death. Can you guess? Anybody? Could guess? What's the best wonder about his death? Number one, it was temporary. It was temporary. Number two, Jesus did not stay in the grave because of the third he rose again as he promised. And death could not hold him. Death was powerless against our wonderful Messiah, Jesus. Our Jesus is alive. Let's give yes. him praise. Amen. Now here's the other half of the title. Counselor. Let's talk about this title, Counselor. The second part of the besides title is the word Counselor. In ancient Israel, a counselor was portrayed by a wise king such as Solomon, giving guidance to his people, to his people. Now, same author Isaiah going into chapter 28 and 20 and describing the Messiah. It says there, Isaiah 20, 20. This also 
comes from the Lord of hosts, who is wonderful in counsel and excellent in guidance. This also comes from the Lord of hosts, who is wonderful in counsel and excellent in guidance. The word counselor is yo West. Yo wise. Which means to advise, to resolve, to advocate. That's your West means. Jesus is a wise counselor. He was, he is, and he will always be the source of all wisdom and knowledge. Because in Christ is hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge, Colossians 2 3. This is what Paul described Jesus Christ as being the source of wisdom and knowledge. And Paul described Jesus as the power of God and the wisdom of God. 1 Corinthians 1 24. He said, Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God. And in Ro Romans 1 23, Paul described the wisdom and knowledge of God as this, saying, All oh, the depth of the riches of wisdom and knowledge of God, how unsearchable is judgment and his path beyond tracing us. You can remember the story of Jesus as a 12 year old boy when his parents left him by accident in the temple. And how long? For 30 days. When Jesus and Mary came back for him, they found Jesus sitting with the teachers and the scribes, listening and asking them questions, like Q&A portion with the, with the smart of the society. The story tells us that teachers and scribes were astonished and amazed at his understanding and answers. Jesus was full of wisdom and understanding with the things of God, for he was God. Now, here's the other side of interpretation. His name is Wonderful Cancelo. Together, okay? The Wonderful Cancelo was interpreted by men as one name. For me, for me, no matter how you expound this name, either separately or together, it will still describe who the Messiah would be and what he would do for you and for me. The word wonderful now becomes an adjective to denounce counselor. It means Jesus' counsel and all the, what he says are wonderful because it comes from the heart, the very heart of God. And if obeyed, will result to many wonderful things to the person listening and obeying. Okay? So, wonderful counselor, what does it mean? It means we can trust him to listen to our problems and guide us in the right direction. Proverbs 3, 5, 6, trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean up in your own understanding, in all your ways, acknowledge Him, and He will, He will direct your path. So we can trust Him to listen to our problems and guide us in the right direction. We can be sure He is listening because He told us to pray to Him about our worries. He said, ask anything in my name according to my will, and I will answer it. Okay? We can be certain also that he has our best interest at, at heart because he loves us. First John 4, 19 tells us that we love him because he loves us first. But the phrase wonderful counselor is often reduced to a good psychologist, okay? Who can give, but by now, some people are, they went to school for the yes, psychology. We, 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 Get a counseling from the counselor. Oh, he's a wonderful counselor. So it's often reduced to good psychologists who can give advice, but it understates the full scope of Jesus Christ as a wonderful counselor. The word counselor came from the root word counsel. But question: What is the full counsel of Jesus? <clears throat> What is the full counsel of Jesus? Here it is. The full counsel of Jesus is the plan of salvation, and it is incomprehensible 
unfathomable. It defies expectation and exceeds our human ability to understand. Can you understand why He saved you? Can you understand why He died for you? Can you understand why He went down from heaven to earth? Just to be, just to take your place? That's unfathomable. It defies expectation. But that is His counsel. His, this counsel is the plan of salvation. His counsel does not stop in our salvation, but extends to the guidance He provides to Christians in their faith in life. So when good Christ saves you, it does not end there. He continues to save you. He continues to save you from the devil and from yourself. Because he wants to live his life in you and through you. Friends, did you know that many people know about Jesus, but they don't actively know Jesus for who he really is? Yes. We talk with people, do you know Jesus? Yes, I know about Jesus. How much do you know about Jesus? I work in a company surrounded by many cultures and religions. And during my conversation with many of them, they led me to ask who Jesus is to them. And here's what they, would, they said. Oh, Jesus, I know Jesus was a good man. Oh, I know Jesus, Jesus was a good teacher. Oh, I know Jesus, Jesus was a prophet of God. Oh, I know Jesus, Jesus was a sort of wisdom and counsel. The truth is, their answers were all true. But there's more to it that they need to know. And even to us, Lord, uh, brothers and sisters, there's more to it that we need to know. Let me tell you, Jesus is not just a good man. He is the only one good. He's the only one. Remember when the rich young ruler came to him, Good master, good teacher. Why did you call me? Did you know there's only one good? He is the only one good. And there's nothing good. Listen to this. And there's nothing good apart from him. Amen. They said that Jesus was a good teacher. But he was not a teacher. But he is the master. People address Jesus as rabbi or rabboni, which means master. It's more than just calling him a teacher. He's master. People said he was just he was a prophet of God. Yes, he was a prophet of God, for he speaks of the of the Father and from the Father, and he also speaks about himself as God. He remember Jesus just that. The Father and I are one. Jesus, they said, Jesus is a source of wisdom and counsel. Jesus was not just a source of wisdom and counsel. Jesus is the wisdom and the power of God, and He is wonderful counselor. Amen. Amen. Now, what does it mean that Jesus is a wonderful counselor? Jesus is our wonderful counselor who is always with us, who is always praying for us, and someone who will never, never leave us nor forsake us. There is simply no counselor in the world like him. And what makes Jesus a wonderful counselor? What makes Jesus a wonderful counselor? Paul attested that all treasures of wisdom and knowledge are found in Christ and even the mysteries of God. Amen. That makes him a wonderful counselor. That's in Colossians 2, 2 to 3. That this means also that the secret things of God have been revealed in, in, in Christ and through him we may know God and have a personal relationship with him. In other words, we may never know God's truth unless it is revealed to us. Amen. What makes him, what makes Jesus do a wonderful counselor? James, the brother of Jesus, wrote, If anyone of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him, it will be given to him. He's the source of wisdom. Wisdom. So you want you want wisdom? Go to Christ. Go to God. 
because you and I are like sheep. You know what sheep are? They are dumb and know nothing. I would rather be dumb as long as Jesus is leading me. You and I are like sheep that are dumb and know nothing, but in Jesus we can find wisdom and direction in all things. He is wonderful counselor. Jesus is the perfect revelation of God, John 1, 18. And he knows everything about everyone. Yes. Thus making him to be wonderful counselor to those who put their trust in him. Now, I'll be concluding with this. You know, in every school, there's always a guidance counselor to help students with any problems they might have pertaining to school matters, even during their last year, the guidance counselor will advise them, or evaluate where would they go after high school, after university, or colleges, whatnot, okay? Even the most institutions, they have counselor to help, to advise, to guide people in their difficult situation. But a counselor meant nothing to anyone if nobody listens or obey his or his counsel, right? As a pastor, people would call or see me for counsel, but my counsel would only be as good with their listening skills and willingness to take actions from the counsel they hear. Jesus is called wonderful counselor because he alone can give us guidance. He alone can help. He can deliver through his wisdom, power, and miracle. He causes everything to work together for a twofold purpose. The greatest good of his children and the highest glory of his name. We have a counselor who is able to deal gently with us. One who is sympathetic to our weaknesses. He's been there. He's done that. He suffered so that he can comfort us in our suffering. Now the question is this. Do you have a relationship with a wonderful counselor? Do you have the relationship with Jesus the Messiah? Our verse today says this. Unto us a child is born it did not say unto Mary and Joseph a child is born and unto Mary and Joseph and Joseph a son is given that's not what it says right the pronoun us is simply for us simple right the pronoun us is simply us it means for the whole world. For God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son. It is not for selected few. It is inclusive. Friends, soon it will be Christmas. <coughs> Most of us will decorate our houses with all kinds of festive decor. And some people will go to, to a great length of spending a lot of money just to decorate your house with the best Christmas tree, the best light, the best whatever. Let me tell you, celebrating Christmas, gift giving during Christmas, inviting friends during Christmas does not make you a Christian. What makes you a Christian? the price of Christmas. Amen. No matter what you do and how much money you spend in gift giving, you donate to charities during Christmas, which is a good thing to do. Spend a lot of money, spend a lot of time inviting friends for Christmas that doesn't make you a Christian. What makes you a Christian is the price of Christmas. Corrie ten Boom once said this, If Jesus were born 1,000 times in Bethlehem and not in me, then I would still be lost. Amen. What a powerful quotation that she said. 
Even if Jesus was born multiple times, if he will come a thousand times here on the earth and will be born on the earth, if he was not born in me, then I'm still lost. That's what he said. Here's the thing, brothers and sisters. Even if you study, even if you go to school and study about the birth of Jesus, even if you are well versed in all of the scripture about his birth and coming here on earth, that doesn't mean you are a Christian. Amen. He needs to be born. Amen. He needs to be born unto you. Now it becomes exclusive. Earlier I said it is inclusive. Now it becomes exclusive. What do I mean? Yes, his salvation, his grace is inclusive. But it becomes exclusive for those old people who would only surrender to him. Who would receive him as Savior and Lord. Jesus needs to be born unto you. Unto me, a child is born. Unto me, a son is given. And I receive the child that was born. And I receive the son that was given. Amen. That makes you a believer. Amen. And I wanted to make personal by saying, friends, unto you, unto all of us, unto the world, the child Jesus was born, and unto you and me, Jesus, the Savior, was given. Amen. Jesus came. Think about this. Jesus came just for you. Amen. How about my birth? Well, I'll tell the same thing. Jesus came just for you. How about Mark? Sister Grace, you can say, Jesus came just for me. Say that, say it. How about Mark? And he can explain the same thing. Jesus came just for him. Jesus came just for you. Jesus came just for me. Amen. Jesus came just for you. He has you in his mind when he was born. And he has you in his heart when he died on that cross. He wants to be your wonderful friend. And wise counselor. Amen. The question is this Was Jesus born unto you already? Did you receive the Son of God, the Father has given you? If not, receive him today. If not, this is the day when you can confess it to your heart. Confess it through your mouth. Yes, Jesus, I receive you as my Savior. Amen. Did you do that? Amen. Just, if you don't have yet a personal relation to Jesus, this is the day, the day of salvation. Amen. You don't want to celebrate Christmas void and meaningless the Christmas trees and the Christmas lights and the gifts and the festivity will not complete the season of Christmas without the price of Christmas living inside of you and today is an opportune time for you to make Jesus as your Savior and Lord if you don't have yet a personal relationship with Jesus. Pray this simple prayer. Nothing magical in this prayer. Just speak it out of your heart. Jesus, I come to you today. I receive your offer of salvation. When you die for me, I accept that as my way of inheriting eternal life. I confess you, Jesus, to be now my Savior and Lord. Would you write my name, Lord, in the Lamb's Book of Life in Heaven? Holy Spirit, come into my heart and my life. 
now. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, thank you for today, Lord. Thank you again, Holy Spirit, for speaking to us truth, powerfully and meaningfully. Oh God, I pray that people who are here today will bring it to life, oh God, Lord. Leave it out. The wonderful counsel that we have in Christ Jesus. And in your name we pray. Amen. 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 Praise, 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 praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Pastor Rick, for uh, wonderfully uh, kicking uh, off <laughs> our final uh, um, series uh, for the year. And uh, that's. Uh, that's a, um, it, it paves the way for the Advent, and just like our Pastor Rick says, we have uh, three more sermons uh, we begin in our series. And uh, wow, I, I was uh, blown with the uh, preaching. I was greatly blessed. The two guys uh, all greatly blessed Amen. with, with God's work. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm not sure if you guys noticed, I was uh, sitting on the edge of my. Uh, of my chair over there and uh, I uh, I almost fell off <laughs> literally but uh, I was I was uh, greatly blessed and um, um, I, I don't want to add any any uh, any uh, more uh, sermon on top of what uh, Pastor Rick uh, says he expounded uh, wonderfully um, to the help of the Holy Spirit so I'll, uh, I'm just here to wrap up our gathering. So why don't we all stand up as we close in, in uh, prayer. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Let's pray. Wonderful Counselor, Lord, we praise you for the uh, infinite uh, wisdom and guidance that you are offering us, uh, Lord God. Thank you that you know the needs of our hearts, uh, Lord God. In this uh, world that is uh, full of questions, you have all the answers, Father God. In this, uh, in this, uh, um, in this world of confusion, Lord Jesus, you have the clarity, Lord God. Pastor, you just reminded us that you you not only know the answer, but you are the answer, Father, <laughs> Lord Jesus. Help us to trust in your perfect plan to each one of us then, that uh, sometimes we may not fully understand them, Lord God, but we would um, rest on the, uh, on the guidance and the wisdom of the wonderful counselor. Hallelujah, Jesus. Lord, uh, be near to those who are lost, uh, Lord God, and who are overwhelmed, Lord God. That's my prayer today. Remind them that your promise um, to guide them and to comfort them and your presence is upon them. Every moment, every single moment of our lives, Lord God, as we celebrate the gift of your Son, may we cling to the truth that we have in you, a counselor who is wonderful, wise, and forever faithful, Lord God. As we go forward, may the wonderful counselor guide your hearts with wisdom, fill your minds with peace, and lead your steps with purpose. May his perfect counsel brings clarity to your decision, comfort you in challenges, and strengthen your faith. Go in grace, walking in the assurance that he is with you always, and, and both now and forever. And everyone who loves Jesus says, Amen. 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 Thank you for joining us. And uh, we look uh, forward to um, having fellowship with you during the time of fellowship after the service. Praise God. Hallelujah.